having worked with a number of family offices, um, I think when we've talked, um, you've said that there's a lot of processes in place that are there because they've just always been there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I know inertia is either inertia or lack of resources to kind of, you know, lack of time to kind of revisit those and change those. Um, I know that's a that's a big hurdle to overcome with a lot of family offices, uh, ones that they struggle with, right? So tell me kind of what your experience has been, you know, kind of how you, what examples you've seen and maybe how you've helped them move through that process. Sure. I think there's a couple of examples, but the best one I usually start out with, and I did this back in the 90s too, is like, I, you start on reporting. What reporting do you have to give to whoever you're reporting to? And in family offices, that may be a patriarch, it may be the CFO, it, it varies. And then you question, do you still need this? Because as time goes on, what I've seen is so many of the family offices create these books of reports. And maybe that was a generation old and maybe the new CFO or a controller doesn't want that. So question it. And then the downstream impact of questioning, that's the way we've always done it, can really cascade down and save time and effort through the, through the uh, process. So a good example would be, oh, we create this quarterly book for the controller. Let's say you take some of those reports out. How could that impact your input either into your performance tool or to the GL? Do you put in more data or less data? And when you're, when you're, the answer is less data, then you start to question, where do we get the data? How do we get the data? And then how do you reconcile? If you're putting in less data, that can save a lot of work. 